Hello there, you are watching Talking Europe on France 24. My guest today is the Foreign Minister of Slovenia. It's one of the smaller European Union member states, but one that's taking on big responsibility as of July 1st, becoming the holder of the EU's six-month rotating presidency. So uh, hello there, uh, Ange Logar. Thank you very much for being on the programme with us. Thank you for your invitation. Let's start off with the EU presidency. Uh, Slovenia's uh, priorities uh, over the next six months. What are the issues that Slovenia will be bringing forward? We decided to focus our um, efforts on the one topic that arise from the recent pandemic. It's the question of crisis management. Mm -hmm. So in European Union, Every now and then, there's a crisis. We had a financial crisis, then we had a migrant crisis, then this pandemic. Mm. And apparently, we always search for answers after the mm. crisis arises. So we would like to discuss in the two formal uh, summit about the crisis management on a health sector mm -hmm. and crisis management on uh, cybersecurity, as uh, data are new oil and uh, for the development of the European Union. And to be to have this um, strategic autonomy preserved from the possible malicious activities of third parties. Beside that, um, there is a question of uh, conference on the future of Europe. As the main part of the conference will take part during Slovenia new presidency, mm -hmm. we will have two plenary, plenaries. We will have discussion with uh, fellow European citizens, and as well, we want to trigger the discussion on the highest possible level and to add the regional flavor to all of that we decided to organize informal summit on western balkans mm -hmm. especially to put the question of the enlargement high on the agenda mm. and to discuss about the region as a strategic question and not just about you know, like procedural issues mm -hmm. of the it, each particular country of the Western Balkan with all its problems. Well, indeed, uh, there are six countries that could potentially uh, be looking to join the European Union. They're in various stages uh, of the process. Uh, Serbia and Montenegro, the furthest along. Albania and North Macedonia recently got the green light to start the process. Um, just in terms of what the interest would be for the European Union of having these states join, uh, there are those who say, look, we already have 27 member states. It's hard enough to get consensus among 27. Do we want to be adding six what's the interest strategically well in in foreign policy uh, there's no vacuum so if you move out from certain part of the world that somebody else that will step in and this is the not even eu neighborhood this is within the territory of european union so and, if you and, have a and do you see that happening third, already third, in this region other actors stepping in other spheres well, of influence well, uh, well, apparently, I mean, we, we lost the portfolio of enlargement 10 years ago in the European Commission. And apparently, in the meantime, there were, uh, let's say, steps mm -hmm. from the other, other superpower to build up the influence within mm -hmm. the region. And strategically, this is not good for European Union. You pop up the question of unanimity, the question of decision-making process, the, the question mm -hmm. of you know, like different majorities within. Mm -hmm. But this is a different part than the question of, of, of the region. But I agree that the two questions are interconnected. Well, of course, a lot of reforms expected of any country trying to join the European Union, uh, but also reforms happening within the EU. Uh, I'm just going to give some background on the next question for our viewers, in fact. Uh, the EU's uh, new Public Prosecutor's Office uh, has just opened uh, this month of June. Uh, it's designed to uncover and prosecute misuse of EU funds across the bloc. Um, just over a week ago, though, uh, the Slovenian Prime Minister refused to acknowledge uh, Slovenia's two candidates for this office. Um, Ange Logar, uh, some saying this is going to be almost impossible for the office to work in Slovenia. Why has your Prime Minister blocked these candidates? Well, I, I shall correct you. I think that was a decision of the government not to be acknowledged by the proposed candidate. That means that the government then issued the uh, let's say, call for a new round of uh, getting the prosecutor. Mm. 
Look, I, I, in my previous career as a member of parliament, I was the chair of the inspection committee on banking fraud. Uh, we had, uh, we took from the pockets of our fellow citizens 2,500 euros they had to pay for the banking hall, and not a single banker was prosecuted and jailed for the reason. So we had serious problems with functioning of the judiciary leg of power. Mm -hmm. And for me, from that, ex you know, like experience I have, I'm very interesting that very interested that the best uh, prosecutors, the best judges uh, enable mm -hmm. that the, let's say, rule of law is definitely functioning as mm -hmm. it should. So in that in that sense, um, I might have a bit different view on uh, rule of law in Slovenia mm -hmm. than from, you know, like it seems like from Brussels. Mm -hmm. And but due to that fact, I mean, sorry, due to that fact as well, the trust of our fellow citizen in judiciary leg of power mm -hmm. is at the lowest in the European Union. So apparently, as this is the case for judiciary leg of power, they should do something in sense that they build trust of our fellow citizens. But just on that question of trust, and, um, uh, there has been personal criticism uh, by your own prime minister, at, for example, the Auditor General of the Court of Auditors, after he identified irregularities in procurement of personal equipment, for example, in the early days of the pandemic. Uh, do you condone these personal attacks on someone who is really an independent member of the judiciary? Well, now you are talking about interior political hassle between the actors within. I, I, I shall refrain well, from that. Well, the head of the Court of Auditors so. isn't a politician. Well, he tends to become apparently a politician. So it's in Slovenia, everything moves quickly. Mm. And, uh, but so you would acknowledge there is some blurring of the lines. One constitutional court judge said in his words that your government doesn't respect any of the limits of acceptable criticism of judges that are normal in democracies. Uh, you said yourself you see it as a political issue, um, but this is a constitutional court. It's independent judiciary. And if I'm not mistaken, there are several constitutional judges who said that constitutional court is politicizing or former uh, constitutional judges. So mm. it's, you know, like uh, Slovenia has 30 years of democracy. Mm -hmm. From the perspective of some country that has a 100 year legacy of democracy, mm -hmm. this is still growing up democracy. And uh, there are a lot of remains from the communist regime that took power in Slovenia for 70 years. And for some people, regaining or enabling status quo, so with no change, it's something that should be preserved. Mm -hmm. But for democratical forces, we want to have a judiciary leg of power that is working, that is a unbiased position of the judiciary leg of power, unbiased media status. So this is the, let's say, this main uh, promises of European Union and main values that European Union is based on. And just to return to the European Public Prosecutor's Office, uh, you said that there will be new nominations. Uh, the head of the office has expressed concern about uh, the management and control systems in Slovenia for EU funds. Uh, in, in, and she says that this lack of prosecutors from Slovenia undermines trust in that. Um, is your government going to swiftly nominate prosecutors to this office? Yeah, I think so. That's why we call the new nomination. But I mean, this is a false argument that this government would stop nominating prosecutor because being afraid that uh, there was a fraud in EU fund. One should be aware that this government is only one year on a power. Mm -hmm. So that means the fraud has been done in the mandate of previous governments, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in previous governments. Mm -hmm. I want to stress out the reason, I mean, the, the main aim of this government is to have functioning prosecution system and functioning judicial leg of power. Full point, full stop. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, I think we would do everything that is possible that those who made crimes, those who breached the law should be prosecuted and then brought before the justice 
Just a quick word about some foreign policy now. A few days ago, you visited Moscow. Uh, you had a joint press conference with the Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov. Um, you said that your government will, and I, I quote the translation at least, always stand for releasing tensions between Russia and other states as the presiding country of the EU for the next six months. Um, just wondering what kind of rapprochement you're seeking and how possible this is when there's still concern expressed by your government and others about the buildup of troops on the Ukrainian border, for example, by Russia. So relations between European Union and Russia Federation is based on five, five principles. And the fourth and the fifth principle, I think, in this uh, very tense and intense relationship should give a bit more uh, impetus in order to, let's say, find common grounds on uh, the, let's say, fields where we can cooperate. And one of these uh, field is uh, global warming, green mm. transition. And I think this cooperation in, in this issue is of utmost importance. European Union on its own, uh, we can hardly achieve any, uh, let's say, tangible results. So we need all superpowers on board. And the, the, the fifth principle, people to people, people to people, it's very important. This is one of the reasons why I use this visit to Moscow as well to meet with uh, NGOs and uh, representative of the opposition mm -hmm. party mm -hmm. in order to get, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, direct information of how the thing, things are in, evolving in, in Russia. Andrzej Loga, thank you very much for your time. That's all we have time for. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having a possibility to speak with you. And that's it from us for now. Do stay with us though, part two, in just a few minutes' time. Scarce resources, little to no recognition, and a succession of natural disasters have driven many of Puerto Rico citizens to the breaking point. Pero el resto de la familia, incluyendo mis hijos, está fuera de Puerto Rico, están en Estados Unidos. Estoy recibiendo algunos 961, creo que es que me sobra. While Joe Biden's presidential win has given some people hope. Y para mí, eh, es mucho mejor eh, el que tengamos todos los derechos que tienen los ciudadanos americanos. Others remain skeptical about the country's future. O debemos independizarnos. Puerto Rico, treading waters, on France 24 and France24.com.